If you're looking to start your journey building multi-platform desktop and mobile applications with .NET MAUI and Visual Studio Code, you've come to the right place. No matter what you're developing on, whether it's Windows, Mac, or Linux, I got you covered with a full end-to-end, start-to-finish, from-scratch developer environment setup. So you can start building iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows applications today, all using .NET MAUI and Visual Studio Code. So let's get into it. Hey everyone, I'm James, and if you're looking for .NET MAUI guides, tutorials, tips and tricks, and so much more, you're in the right place. So make sure you jam on that subscribe button so you get notified every time I put out a video right here on my channel. Now, if you watch any of my other videos on .NET MAUI, you may have noticed that I often use Visual Studio 2022 to do all my .NET MAUI development. I I actually just mostly on Windows most of the time, but I do have my Mac machine, and that's where Visual Studio Code comes in, enabling me to build on Windows, Mac, or on Linux, which is really great. Now, Visual Studio 2022, it gives me a checkbox to get everything set up. It's an integrated development environment. It handles installing Java, the SDKs, the emulators, all that stuff for me. But since Visual Studio Code is a lightweight code editor, we have extensions built on top of it, like the C-sharp dev kit and the .NET MAUI extension. Now, what I wanted to do today is show you everything that you need to know to actually get set up because it is a little bit more of a manual process based on the different operating systems you want to develop for and the operating systems that you are developing on. So that means that yes, you can develop on Windows, Mac or on Linux. And in fact, I'm going to show you my Mac setup. I actually reformatted my Mac machine, my MacBook Air over here with an M1 processor to actually set it up from scratch from end to end. So backed everything up to OneDrive, refreshed everything, reset it, and that's what we're going to see today. But before we jump into that, I want to talk about what you can develop and where, because that's an important thing to think about based on what you need to develop for. So since different SDKs and emulators or simulators are available on different operating systems, it means that you're not going to be able to develop for every single OS on every single platform. Let's start with the basics. If you're on Windows, you can use Visual Studio 2022 or Visual Studio Code to do .NET MAUI development. And if you're using Visual Studio Code, you can develop for Windows, because obviously the Windows SDK and everything's there for you to deploy locally. And you can also develop for Android. Now, since Android and Android Studio and the emulators and SDKs are on Windows, you have everything you need to jump between those two platforms. Now, if you're on Mac, like I'm gonna be setting up today, you can obviously still develop for Android because also Android Studio SDKs emulators are there on your Mac. And then additionally, you can get set up to do local Mac development and also iOS and iPad development as well. And then finally, if you're looking to develop on a Linux machine, then that will be limited to just Android development because the Android emulators and SDKs are there for you. So based on what you need, you can jump between those different uh, environments that you're going to need. So today I'm going to show end-to-end macOS setup with Visual Studio Code, but I want to let you know that obviously all the things I'm going to show you apply to the other operating systems, and I'll put links to all the documentation that will guide you through the different sort of uh, quirks on the different operating systems. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so the very first thing that I want to show you is the .NET MAUI documentation. There's all sorts of different reference guides and tutorials, but there is an installation guide as well. In fact, this installation guide will show you Visual Studio and VS Code and everything that you need to know. We're actually going to come back to it and reference it because there's a lot of great information here that will help us make decisions for our needs and our operating system. Now, the first thing that we do need to install is .NET and the .NET MAUI workload. You can go to .NET, .dot.net, or .NET.Microsoft.com, or if you're on the documentation, hit download.NET. Now, on the .NET website, you can hit download, and as of this time of recording, .NET 8 is our long-term support, and I'm automatically here set up on Apple Silicon, so it knows what to pick. But .NET runs everywhere, so whether you're on Mac, Windows, or Linux, there's an install for you. So you can click on this, all .NET 8 downloads, or .NET 9, or .NET 10, or whatever you're on, and you can get the different installers that you may need for your operating system. So this will install the .NET SDK 
based on what you need. So if you need x86 or ARM builds, different distros, definitely check that out. Okay, so let's first and foremost install.net, one click install, boom, and I'm just simply gonna go ahead and save this and then click open. And of course your download speed will vary based on your download speed. So just a few button clicks will install the .NET SDK on your machine. And this is the same on Linux or on Windows as well, so nothing different here. So this does just take a few seconds to install and you're good to go. Now, one thing I wanna talk about is that this includes the .NET SDK, the runtime, and the ASP.NET Core runtime. So you can actually start building console applications, web applications right away, but .NET MAUI is distributed through a workload, which is an additional install on top of the .NET SDK. So we're gonna to need to install that next. So let me go ahead and close this. I'll just move that to the trash, perfect, and close out of this. I'm gonna go ahead and bring up a terminal. Um, that's where we're going to install the .NET MAUI workload. So let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit here for us, perfect. So here I can now type in .NET version or .NET info, for example, and get information about the .NET SDK that I have installed. Uh, and if for some reason you don't see that command or it's not working, close the terminal and reopen it uh, after you install the .NET SDK. So here you can see the ASP.NET Core and the .NET uh, SDK installed. The next thing I'm gonna do is actually do a workload list. And this is a nifty command that will show you any workloads that you have installed. So I don't have any here, uh, so because I haven't installed anything yet because it's a fresh machine. So what we're gonna wanna do is, uh, for example, do .NET workload install MAUI. And that's the command I'm gonna run. Now here I need to elevate my permissions. So I'm gonna do say sudo here and do a .NET workload install MAUI. So of course, based on your machine and your setup, you may need to give it uh, some elevated permissions. Now at this point, I'm gonna install the MAUI uh, workload. And this is gonna install everything that I need as far as SDKs and templates and things like that on my Mac machine. So this does take a few uh, seconds or minutes uh, based on your speed to install. So let's let it, and let it go. Okay, perfect. So .NET MAUI workload install, check, check, check. We are good to go. And I can now do .NET workload list again. And sure enough, there is the MAUI workload. Now, the important part is that under the hood, the MAUI workload actually has additional workloads that it's installed for us. We can actually run another command, which is going to be .NET workload search. And what that will do is it will show us all the available workloads that are out there. So here we can see MAUI, Android, desktop, iOS, things like that. The MAUI one includes all the platforms that I need. So it'll have Mac Catalyst, iOS, Android, specifically here for this machine, which is really, really great. Uh, so once we have that up and running, what we're gonna do now is show you that, yeah, you could actually create a .NET MAUI project here if you wanted to. You could say .NET new, here I'll say list, for example, and this will show me all of the templates. And of course I have all of the ones that are built in. If I scroll to the top, I'll see that I have the Android and .NET MAUI ones all ready to go. So I could now do .NET new, but of course we wanna install Visual Studio Code to actually create the project template as well. So I'm gonna go over back into the browser and we're gonna to go to code.visualstudio.com. So this is the Visual Studio Code website where I can download and install VS Code. Of course, it tells me to download for Mac, but it's available on Windows, Linux, and of course, Mac as well. So here, I'm just gonna go ahead and save again, and then we'll go ahead and install VS Code, which is also a very quick installation. Here, I'm just gonna drag and drop onto my applications folder, and then we can go ahead and launch VS Code down here. Perfect. All right, so once we have VS Code installed, we'll also have to install some extensions. So yeah, I've opened it from the internet, so let's go ahead and open VS Code, and perfect. All right, let's make it a little bit bigger here, and make it bigger, and then we'll zoom in a little bit for us. Now there's a great getting started with VS Code Guide if you've never used VS Code before, uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say that I did it all, because I totally did it all, and I know 100% of how VS Code works, just kidding. All right, so uh, now that I have VS Code installed, you can go to a new terminal, for example, and you could run those same .NET commands. So if you wanted to, you could .NET, you know, uh, new, you could .NET build, you could .NET run, you could do all those things that, that, that we've done before in the terminal. It's just an integrated terminal. 
But what we're going to want to do is actually install some extensions for C Sharp and also .NET MAUI. So I'm going to go over into the extensions gallery here, and I'm just going to type in MAUI or .NET MAUI or whatever you know you want to pick. Uh, MAUI should just come .NET MAUI, but if you don't see it, you want the .NET MAUI extension, which is built on top of the C Sharp dev kit. Here we can go to dependencies and see the C Sharp extensions there and the C Sharp dev kit as well. So it gives us everything that we need to get up and running inside of VS Code, which is awesome. Okay, cool. So here we can take a look at the details, but let's just go ahead and install it. Now, as this is installing, it's going to install those dependencies. And you can take a look at the features. You can also look at the change log as well and see how things are advancing and any new features or things like that. Also mentioned that there's a pre-release version. If you want to flip to pre-release, things are always being updated uh, all the time with the C Sharp extensions and the .NET MAUI extensions as well. So I also want to show you if you clear this out, we'll see that not only did the .NET MAUI extension get installed, but also the C Sharp and C Sharp dev kit also got installed there as well. So everything is up and running. And of course, make sure you always check for updates as things progress. You can go down into the settings and then actually open the settings and under extensions, you'll see the .NET MAUI and the C Sharp dev kit there. There's some really nice things here like hot reload for XAML, for example, that's here. We're going to come back to this uh, setting a little bit later because as we can see the Android SDK and other things are configured, but also take a look at the C sharp dev kit extension because there are things like hot reload that you might want to enable, which would be nifty too. I have a whole shortened video on that as well. So cool. So now you know where to get to the different settings inside of VS code, but let's now go ahead and actually create a new project. I can go to the Explorer and hit create new project, and this will load the project templates for me automatically. There we go. And there's down in Maui. It's right at the top. I can go ahead and select that, pick a folder where I would like to save it. So let's create a new one. I'm going to call it projects here and hit open. So that's the destination picker. I'm going to call it Maui app one and then create the new project. All right. So it's going to create everything that I need. And we're going to see that it will open up a standard sort of project file explorer on the left hand side. Uh, but also we can see a lot of things are happening on the bottom, like you know, different analyzers are running. And we can also see the solution explorer that's opened up for us with the C sharp dev kit. So it's a great way of viewing it instead of the file explorer. So we just want the solution explorer so we can see the nesting and the different dependencies. Now, one thing to note here is that we are going to see a bunch of errors because we haven't installed any of Xcode or Android SDKs at all. So that's what's next for us to do. All right, let's first handle the Xcode and iOS setup here. So I'm just going to first kind of close these and also show that in the output, you might want to read this fully so we can actually see like, hey, the Java SDK is required. Here's how to do it. Uh, here's the Android SDK that you may need. And there's a bunch of other things inside of here as well. Now, I will point out that there is some great walkthroughs to get started. So for example, there is this getting started with .NET MAUI. It's going to show you how to connect your account to the C Sharp dev kit, which I'm going to do here. So let's go ahead and sign in. Perfect. And now I'm all set and ready to go. And then after that, the guide will show you how to set up your environment, set up your .NET MAUI environment, all the things that you may need. So this actually just walks you through kind of what I showed you a little bit, which is nice. But it doesn't show you necessarily how to get set up with the different emulators and SDKs and different requirements beyond that. So I'm going to first go ahead and just pin VS code because we're definitely going to come back to it and then quit out. So I mentioned we're going to install Xcode first, which will give us all of our iOS SDKs and also our simulators as well. Now I want to point out here that on the .NET MAUI installation documentation, it shows us our minimum requirements and this release versions, which is very important. It shows us for each release what is compatible. Specifically here for Apple tools, it's Xcode 15.3 and 15.4 based on this specific service release of .NET 8. This, of course, walks us through everything we need to know, but it'll also show us any additional steps for iOS and Mac to get up and running. And of course, it's telling us that we need to install Xcode, which is required, and run a few more commands and, of course, open Xcode. So there are a few ways to install Xcode, and one that's very popular is just to install it from the Mac App Store. This is how I used to do it all the time, uh, and I used to just install what was ever there for me. 
The problem is that sometimes the versions of Xcode that are in the App Store don't match with what's actually supported by Don and Maui at the time. So you may want to do it more manual. And you can do that by going to the Apple Developer Portal and sign in and download specific versions of Xcode. So here we can see the stable release of 15.4, for example. And you can download it directly from the Apple Developer Portal. And there's other tools that you can install as well. Now, this means that every time you want to install a new version or go back, you're going to need to do that. But there's a tool called Xcodes that's open source that's really awesome that allows you to manage multiple versions of Xcode on your machine. I absolutely love it. I've done a whole video on it, but uh, all you have to do is simply download the Xcodes app, put it into your application folder and launch it and sign in and you're good to go. So here's Xcodes. I'm going to go ahead and open it up here. And the first thing that we're going to see, let me make it a little bit bigger, of course, if I zoom in here, is that it shows me all of the different versions of Xcode available to me, including release candidates, betas, and older versions. I can install any of them. So this is what's really, really nice about it, is with one click, I can see the platforms and the version of Xcode to install. So we're going to install 15.4 right now. Now, of course, based on when you're watching this, you want to make sure what's compatible and install then. So make sure that you match up your version of Xcode which, with what is supported. Now, when you click and install this, this is going to take uh, quite a few minutes, to be honest with you. So I'm going to definitely fast forward through this and make it look like it's super duper crazy fast, but it does take several minutes uh, based on your internet speed. This is going to unarchive, it's going to do security validation and all this other stuff. And then what we're also going to want to do is make it active. So this runs a command that makes it active automatically for us. And then we can install the different platforms like iOS that we're going to want to install. Now it is optional based on what you want to run. So if you want to do like different types of development, you can do those optionally. But here I'm just going to do the iOS download and install, which will give me all of my simulators and any of the additional SDKs that are required for iOS development. So again, I'm going to speed this up so we can skip by it. Perfect. There we go. Awesome. So now we have Xcode and our iOS simulators up and running and it's set to active. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to relaunch a new terminal. So that's what I'm going to do here. And again, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger for us. And we're going to run this command, which is Xcode select dash dash install. So this is going to install a uh, developer command line tools. And actually when you run that, they're actually like hidden behind this window for some reason. It took me a little bit way too long to figure that out, but there it is. There's Xcode select. So we're going to install that as well uh, as part of the requirement. So we're going to accept that license agreement and we'll be ready to go. And again, this takes several minutes, but I'm going to speed it up for us here. Perfect. All right. Now that we have Xcode installed via Xcodes, the iOS package installed, now we are ready to get going. We're going to want to go now into the applications and see that we have Xcode 15.4 here. Now, when you install it from the App Store or manual, it's just going to be called Xcode. So be aware that the pathing is going to be a little bit different that you may need to worry about later. And then inside of Xcodes, it's going to show us the folder path directly for Xcode. So let's go ahead and launch it. And then we want to launch it at least one time so we can register everything. There might be additional uh, terms and additions and things like that that we need to accept. So let's just go ahead and see Xcode installed. So just hit continue and you're kind of good to go. And what's important is that you go to the settings. You can check out what's installed. Uh, if you want to. So here, for example, you can look at your accounts that you can link. You can look at different navigation and key bindings and platforms you have installed. So here we have Mac, which is built in. And of course, iOS 17.5. And you can see additional locations and command line tools, all that stuff that you have. So it's, it's nice to be aware of that. And additionally, one uh, window that I'm often going back and forth from uh, beyond the platforms folder is actually window and then devices and simulators, or even organizers good too, but this is going to show us all of the different devices that are registered or simulators that I have, and you can install more as well. Okay. Ooh, Xcode done. iOS ready to go. Next up is that we need to get Android stuff installed. So here again, we're first going to install the Microsoft Open JDK 17. This is going to be the JDK that is how the Android applications are built. And you just need to pick what specific operating system and architecture you want. So here I'm on Apple Silicon. 
I'm going to install the JDK 17.0 or again, whatever is recommended inside of the documentation here uh, is 17. I'm just going to install it really quick. It is super duper quick. And we're going to go ahead and install. Perfect. And in just a few seconds, now we have the JDK up and running. Perfect. Cool. Now, beyond that, we're going to actually need to install the Android SDK and additional tooling. And here we can see that there's several ways of doing this. If we're on Windows, Visual Studio could install it for us, but we probably just want VS Code. So there's a few ways of doing it. Uh, Android Studio, you can install. Uh, you can also, if you're on Linux, use a package manager to do it. There's also this built-in .NET new sort of install Android dependency thingy that's there too. It's a magical build command where you can pass out a bunch of commands and it'll download stuff automatically for you. Uh, this is nifty, although I don't know if it's my recommended, my personal James recommended, even though it says it's recommended in the documentation. Um, it's nice that it exists uh, if you don't want to install anything else. But since we've already installed Xcode, let's just install Android Studio because that will enable us to manage our Android SDKs, our emulators, and a lot more. I'm going to install Android Studio here. And at time of recording right now is Studio uh, Koala uh, up and running. So again, we're going to go ahead and save that. And then we're just going to simply uh, install it. Uh, so we're installing lots of things, right? VS Code, Xcode, and Android Studio, and all the SDKs and stuff that we need. But that is multi-platform development. So again, all I'm going to do is drag and drop that into the Applications folder. Perfect. And now we're going to go ahead and open up Android Studio for the first time once it's done extracting it. Okay, let's go and uh, eject that. Perfect, why not? And open it up from the Finder. There we go, Android Studio, and open it up. And again, this will take a few seconds to open up and verify. And of course, says you downloaded it from different places, but you know, it'll be good to go. All right, cool. Once it's up and running, we're going to want to get started uh, here. So up to you if you want to send or not send data. Let's just do it on um, my machine. And then we can zoom in and we can go through the setup wizard. So here you can do standard install or custom install. You can see what it's doing. If you want, it's the Android SDK, different API levels, and the AVD, which is the Android Virtual Device Manager. Uh, and here, uh, I'm just going to say, yeah, let's just do the defaults and we'll install more later on. But there's the SDK location. Uh, but I'm just going to do standard install. And it's going to install a bunch of build tools and things that I need for me automatically. Now, this is installing the Android Platform 35 right now of time recording. Uh, 34 is what is required. So we're going to need to install some more stuff, but let's just get this stuff installed. So uh, it'll all be ready for us when Don and Maui supports that. And again, you might be watching this and it might be already supported. So you might not need to do anything else. So check the documentation along the way as you're watching this video to see what actual versions are required. Now, inside of Android Studio, you can do more actions and then go to the SDK manager. And then what this will do is it'll show us all of our different things that are required. So again, go here and we can see Android SDK 34 is what is required. So here, all I got to do is simply select the upside down cake, which is Android 14 or API level 34 and select apply, which will install it for us automatically. Perfect. All right. And there we go. It's actually quite pretty quick install to be honest with you, but based on your machine, it's going to take a little bit more time uh, to get that up and running. So there we go. Perfect. Now, beyond that, I'm just going to select OK here. If I do more actions again, we can go down to the Android Virtual Device Manager. And this will enable us to set up more Android emulators. So it actually creates this Pixel Fold device for us automatically, but I'm going to say new and let's just do like a Pixel, I don't know, 7, 7A, something like that, different sizes and just hit next here. And then we can pick and choose different system images uh, on this, but I'll just use the pre-made one. That seems fine. It has Google Play APIs on it, and then we can give it additional settings if we want to. All right, cool. Now I'm just going to delete the old ones. I don't have it laying around, but I'm just going to boop do that. Now the cool part is that Visual Studio Code will be able to find these emulators, and they'll all play happy together as well, which is really nice. And you could start it from here, but Visual Studio Code will do it for us automatically. So let's hop back over to Visual Studio Code. And let's see if we can get things up and running. All right, so inside of Visual Studio Code, I already had the project open because I created it previously. So created if you haven't yet. 
Uh, but we're going to see that, oh, I was oh so close, and I still get Android install bits are missing. So we're going to investigate that. But first, let's look at the output. And we can see that actually it found all of the Xcode bits and pieces for us, which is awesome. But if we look up top, we can see that the Android uh, components Java was found. It does say that Android Platform 34 was there, but not the build tools and not the command line tools. We can also see there's some recommended options like the non Google Play Android emulator system images, and those are optional, so that one's okay. But let's hop back over to Android Studio and understand what I missed. So I'm gonna go back into the SDK manager, and I'm gonna zoom in here and see that, yeah, there's the SDK platforms, but also the tools. Now, it only shows me the latest tool, so I just need to select this show package details, and I can see all of the other build tools. So let's select 34 and hit apply. This will now install the 34 build tools that are required at time of recording, at least, for .NET MAUI. Now, I also need to come up and I need to select this Android SDK command line tools. And this can just be the latest, that's okay. I'm gonna hit apply here, and that's gonna install that as well. So those are two additional components, and of course, Visual Studio Code and the .NET MAUI extension told me everything about that. All right, cool. Now, the nice part here is that I can come up to the command palette and I can do .NET MAUI. And we can see the here is configure Android and Apple to set different locations inside of here. And I can pick the devices, of course, but let me go ahead and do configure Android. I can click on how to configure, set the path, set the Java SDK path, but those were found. So let's go ahead and tap on that refresh Android environment. That's gonna rescan and see if it can find everything that I just installed. And sure enough, everything was found for me automatically down in the bottom. Now, of course, I don't have that other system image and I could do that if I wanted to, but it is good to go because I just need one Android emulator and uh, it'll go and find it. All right, cool. If I want to, of course, like it'll tell me exactly what I need to do, but we'll be good to go. All right, so now at this point, I'm ready to go. Uh, if I come in, we can see that I have all the dependencies set up for Android, iOS, and Mac. I can see that inside the CS Proj for me automatically here. And I can start to open up my files, like my main page here in the XAML. Now, all I need to do is run the application. So I can actually go to this little curly brace and say, build target. And here I can select my Mac machine, emulators, iOS simulators on here if I want to. Um, and that will enable me to pick the deployment target for this uh, build. I can also go up and say .NET MAUI. And just like we saw earlier, I can type in pick and I can do startup device or startup project. So I'm going to select startup device and select my Mac. And now all I need to do is go into run and debug and simply run and debug it. This will compile up the Mac application and run it on my Mac machine. So here we go. And there it is. Now I'm actually on a pretty high res monitor. You see me doing a lot of zooming, but here you can see that I have the Mac application up and running, which is awesome. Cool. So now I can do normal debug stuff, but let's go ahead and now run it on Android. So I'm going to go into debug target again, select my Android emulator and hit run and debug again. This time Visual Studio Code will actually start my Android emulator for me automatically. And that's actually really, really nice. And of course, if I have a device plugged in, it will also show me my devices as well. Down here, we can see that this uh, system little thingy pops up and that is my Android emulator, which again, will take a few seconds the very first time getting up and running. And this is a fresh, fresh, fresh install. So let's go ahead and get it built up and launched and ready to go. All right, our application is running. Here we go, .NET MAUI. And we have the same exact application now running on my Android emulator. Awesome. I can, of course, come in. I can set breakpoints. I can look at the code behind, all those things that I would be used to. All right, now the last thing to do is run this on an iOS simulator. Now I'm just going to go in and again, I can select the different command. If I do .NET and pick startup device, you can select your simulator for iPad or I or iPhone here. I like to just do the smallest one, which is the SE device. And then again, just hit run and debug. Now, because I'm inside of a C sharp project it's actually asking me questions where it knew automatically was XAML. So that that's kind of interesting. And you can see it saves my profile here. I can also go and run this from the little run. Uh, over here, this little play button over here, which is kind of nice and actually allow me to run or debug the application. 
Okay, cool. So the iOS simulator is up and running at this point, or getting started to, I should say. It takes a few seconds to get up and running. And at the same time, it's also getting ready to deploy and debug my .NET MAUI application that we just saw running on Android. So again, this takes a few seconds, but sure enough, there's the .NET MAUI application. And now we're going to start to see call stacks and threads and things up and running as the debugger starts. And I can go ahead and hit click me and we are totally good to go on Mac, Android and iOS. All right, there you have it full end to end development environment setup. Of course, I've done this here on Mac OS, but if you're over on Linux, like I kind of showed in the documentation, you can just install Android Studio or the Android SDK and tools for your specific distro. And then Visual Studio Code will pick those up for Android development. If you're over on Windows, you can do the same. You can install Android Studio, all the things that I just showed you, um, and also the Windows dependencies as well. But honestly, if you're over on Windows, my recommendation, just in my personal opinion, is to install Visual Studio 2022. Hit that little checkbox for .NET MAUI development and then install Visual Studio Code and all of the .NET MAUI extensions. I like to do that and let Visual Studio handle everything for me because it just gets everything up and running I could possibly want. And then Visual Studio Code will pick up all of those settings automatically. That's my preferred route, but it's up to you. You can install Visual Studio Code standalone, just like I showed you. I'll put that link to that documentation that I talked about earlier. Now, I hope that I answered all of your questions and that you followed along and you were setting up your development environment machine as well. Let me know how it went. Go down to the comments below and let me know. If you have any additional questions, chime in there as well. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And of course, if there's any other topics that you want, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe so you get up to date every single time I put out a video here on the channel. And finally, I always like to recommend it. Hit that like button if you did enjoy this video. It helps others find this video and it helps out this channel, which I really appreciate. All right, that's gonna do it for me. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a good one.